everyone, and I'm just delighted to join you all for Cybos 2021. And let me start by congratulating Swift and everyone else who has helped stage this year's conference virtually once again. Now, one benefit of being virtual is that we now have many more people engaging in this very important global dialogue. The winds of change are blowing harder than ever, and our industry needs to reach a meeting of minds like never before. Of course, none of us are strangers to change over the course of our long careers, but it does feel like we're in the midst of a once in a lifetime shift. The architecture of finance, and by that I mean global currencies all the way down to payments, lending and deposits. It's unbundling bit by bit, and it's rebundling around a new, largely digital architecture. And this happened in trading over the last few decades, and it was an evolution. But what we're seeing now is more of a revolution with new architectures supplanting old ones. And the way our industry has operated for decades, it's going to be replaced with new ways. And the scale and the speed required to serve our clients, it's of a completely different magnitude. So here at City, where we move over $4 trillion global each day, where we enable clients to issue payments in 144 different currencies, where we do business in more than 160 different countries and are on the ground in nearly 100 of them, well, we have a deep appreciation for scale and agility. And we're seeing how the world is becoming more global and more local at the same time and how it's becoming faster and how it's becoming more complex. We are reshaping our firm and our exceptional assets so that we maintain our relevancy and we continue to deliver for clients. Swift, as the community that underpins global flows, must make the same journey. Not just talk about it, but actually accelerate action. Because if traditional payments remain slow and comparatively clunky, as they are today, then it's a huge incentive for others to develop alternative, large-scale global payment systems that could be cheaper and much faster. Already, the convergence between new technology and shadow banking risks derailing years of our progress. There's always been unregulated financial activity, but the new technology has the potential to scale that globally to the detriment of the regulated sector and the clients and the consumers we serve. We simply can't afford the regulated sector to be perceived as technologically deficient to the unregulated sector, and that's why we must relentlessly modernize our regulated financial system through public-private partnerships and through communities that bring our industry together, such as SWIFT. At the same time, we must make sure to work with our regulators in every single jurisdiction so we all move forward on this journey together. I am confident in our ability to get this done. I don't think the pandemic has weakened our resolve or forced us off course for one moment. I think it has given us a moment of reflection from which clarity comes. We can be proud that our industry demonstrated resilience and was able to serve as a source of strength for so many during this crisis. And it's been no accident. It's the result of years of investing in operational resiliency, digitizing often cumbersome processes, and always striving to be there and be the best for our clients. Banking regulations enacted in the wake of the last global financial crisis, well, they helped put us on a stronger footing. So when the market shut down, when the supply chains were disrupted and the usual order of business was thrown into complete chaos, we sprang into action, tapping into our ingenuity to devise solutions on the fly. And we kicked open the doors to what is possible. So as we emerge from the pandemic, it's imperative we don't lose this ability to innovate with urgency. SWIFT has the vision. It is simply a matter of moving faster and of innovating with speed. And it's one of the reasons why we must transition to the ISO 20022 standards that have become the consensus for all modern value transfer systems. Now, I know that for some of us, this transition is not going to be easy. It represents a huge investment of time and resources. But in this digital world, SWIFT has to start delivering at an even faster pace, or we're going to risk becoming obsolete. 
To that point, it's also important that we remember we are all in this together. Now, there are many areas where we go head to head. This isn't one of them. Our collaboration and cooperation is precious. And we're all equal partners here, regardless of the size of our institution or the countries in which we operate. And that also means keeping the gates open to fintechs and big techs, because we can certainly learn from their speed and agility. And let's not forget, we are now living in a world of digital platforms. So if we want to expand our impact, we need to meet our clients and our customers where they conduct business and where they live their financial lives. These two imperatives that I've highlighted, moving with speed and acting in partnership, they're going to be critical in confronting the complexities of the new world of digital money. But before I conclude, let me mention one area that's especially true, and that is the possible and probable emergence of central bank digital currencies. So-called stable coins may be on the horizon as mass market methods of payment. Some believe that cryptocurrencies such as Bitcoin will cross the Rubicon and will become very useful for payments. So what's a bank to do? Well, we thought long and hard about developing a city coin. But what's the market structure if every single firm goes off in their own direction? You know, we're 11,000 banks in this virtual room. So we believe the answer isn't me, but it's we. And it's why we've worked with partners to suggest an innovative model for digital currency as part of the global competition that's been run by the Monetary Authority of Singapore to develop retail CBDC solutions. We think there's a way for the regulated sector to move forward with tokenized money in a joined up way. Ours, it's a pretty simple idea. The notion of a DLT that contains the liabilities of central banks, commercial banks, and e-money institutions, i.e. the regulated entities that make up the formal financial system. And as our work has progressed, we've caught some glimpses of an answer to the so what questions that bedevil so many DLT projects. And we'd love you to join us in this exploration. So please, reach out to find more. And if we do find that the future world of money is expressed through both tokens and accounts, we believe that SWIFT is going to have a really strong and important role to play. In this pivotal moment in the history of money, we need to lift our eyes up from the level of our individual firms to see that our future is bound with our community. And in building the next generation of digital payment systems, there's ample room for everyone's contributions, central banks, commercial banks, fintechs, big techs, and the large section of the crypto community that embraces regulation. So let's move forward, and let's do so with purpose, and let's move forward with urgency. Thank you very much.